Hello everybody, Andrew Hoffman here once again with an exciting tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about Godot themes. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. If it turns out you like this type of content, consider clicking the subscribe button on the bottom right. I typically produce videos regarding programming topics and cybersecurity. For those of you that are returning subscribers, welcome back. I'm not moving away from cybersecurity tutorials, I just decided to take a little bit of a break. I know there's been a lot of Godot tutorials coming out recently. It just turns out that I picked this game engine up over the holidays, and it's been really fun for me to play around with as a hobby. So I've been, as I've been learning things, I've decided to make tutorials on YouTube so I can share what I've learned with you. So let's get into it. Today I want to talk about Godot themes. I think themes are a really cool concept in Godot. And, you know, when you're building a game in Godot, one thing you always have to build is a user interface. But the user interfaces by default are pretty ugly in Godot, and ultimately you don't want a production game to be using the same user interface as everyone else. Now you can customize your UI independently using PNG images or whatever you want, textures in Godot, but if you have a game that has a thousand UI nodes, so maybe it has like, you know, a hundred buttons, a hundred checkboxes, etc., it's going to take a really long time to customize them all one by one. So the theme tool in Godot really makes that a much more simple process. So let's just dig straight into it. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to create it in desktop Godot. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it dark theme. Click OK, use current folder and create an edit. So Godot is going to bootstrap as usual. It's going to bootstrap a game scaffold for me. And I'm going to click the root of this scaffold, open in file manager. So I'm using the dark theme for this tutorial. It's freely available on itch.io. And I'm going to make one attempt to pronounce this guy's name. It looks like munir itch.io. So you might just have to Google Godot dark theme if you want to find this. But basically, it's a freely available theme that differs from the built-in theme. So what we're going to do for starters is we're actually just going to create a new folder called Assets and create a new folder called Scenes because I like to keep my projects organized. And as you scale a project in any language or framework or tool set, you'll find that it's very important to keep it organized. So we're going to go to Assets, we're going to drag and drop the dark theme in. And then we're going to maximize the Godot game engine. So we're going to need two scenes in order to get started. We're going to need a 2D scene right here. And we're going to save it and we're going to put it in scenes and call it main. This is kind of like the game scene, like you're playing the game. And we'll come back and customize this in a second, but we're also going to want a UI scene. And we're going to create a new scene and call it UI. And this is going to be a user interface scene. And inside of the UI scene, we're going to add some child notes. We're going to add a button. We're going to add a check button. We're going to add a check box. I already added that, so I'll add the check button. And finally, we'll add a line edit. What we're going to do is we're going to take all of these. We're going to expand them a little bit if needed. So for example, in the case of this button here, we'll put some text in it, click me. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, um, well, we can't launch the game. We can, but it'll try to load the UI scene. And we don't even want that. We want to scaffold out the main scene a little bit more and then launch it. So we go to the main scene. Inside of the main scene, we're going to need a camera, 2D, and we're going to set it to current and that will position our viewport around the center of the grid. And then we're going to want a, another object in here. We're going to want what's called a canvas layer. And canvas layers allow you to create a new rendering layer that's not tied to the background of the game world. We're going to drag the UI scene on top of that. Now it's going to appear funny, but it should appear right when we run the main scene. There we go. So we run the main scene, a new canvas layer is evoked, and the new canvas layer is, I believe, always invoked underneath the camera. So here we are. 
now we have some UI elements here. We have a button that says click me, we have a checkbox, and we have this off on switch. We even have somewhere we can put text, so an input field. Um, I believe they call it a line edit. But as you can see, they're all pretty boring. They use the Godot um, languages, or sorry, not the language, but the a game engine's built in theme. And that's pretty much what we want to change. So let's actually go over here. Let's expand this button a little bit more. And let's maybe copy paste, add an, another button, or you can't copy paste, control D, add another button. And the reason why is because the buttons um, were pretty small, so you really couldn't tell what they looked like. But as you can see now, all of the buttons using the default theme have kind of a gray brown gradient and a little bit of a border on the side. So inside of assets, we have this dark theme folder. We're going to double click the dark dot theme. And it's going to say there's missing dependencies. And that's because it expects all these dependencies to be in the root directory. But we put in assets to be more organized. So we're going to click fix dependencies and we're going to click fix broken. And it's going to try to automatically find all the dependencies it's looking for. In this case, they'll all be correct. So I'll click OK. And then I'll click open anyway. Now, when you try to automatically find lost or broken dependencies, one of the issues is font files don't get re-imported. And I'm not exactly sure why, so oftentimes you have to close the engine and reload it. In this case, we can just click off of the font and go back to the default font, which is fine. Now on the default font, you'll be able to see this preview of what this font kit or this theme looks like. So as you can see right here, there's a checkbox, but instead of using the check that Godot provides, it actually just uses something that looks like a Nike swoosh. We have this check button. We have line edits, we even have tabs and a disabled tab, etc. So this is a preview of the customization this theme can apply to your whole project. And you can have multiple themes for project and you can selectively choose which ones to apply and we'll get to that. So whenever you open a theme file, in this case, dark.theme, you notice on the right, it has a list of all of the UI elements provided by the Godot game engine. What you can do in here is inside of your theme, you can adjust the, both the colors and you can adjust the styles. And the styles use what are called style box elements. So in this one it says button disabled.stylebox. So if we go in here, we can see button disabled.stylebox. We can open it up. And style boxes contain very small images, typically something like akin to a PNG image. And what they do is they apply this image and they scale it up and down as needed because these can be, these elements can be infinitely scaled up and down. And this is kind of the basis for a lot of the elements inside of a theme, is style boxes and colors. You'll see that the same thing applies to the checkbox. However, the checkbox has a couple other variables that you can adjust. Likewise, some of them will allow you to provide your own icons. And this is where the swoosh was provided in order to overwrite the default. So inside of your Godot game, if you want to customize a large number of UI elements at, at once, what you do is you just create a dot theme file. You open it up in the Godot editor, go to the inspector, and then you edit all of the fields that are provided for each of the elements. But then how do you apply it? Because obviously it's not applied when we run the game. When we run the game, we get the default. Well, that's also very simple. So in our UI scene right here, you can see that if we click on the second button inside of the inspector to the right, we can go to theme and we simply just apply a theme. In this case, we only have one theme, so we can apply that. We can do the same for the checkbox over here. We just go down to theme and we apply, let's see right here, oops, we want to apply the theme that we downloaded, dark theme, and you'll notice the checkbox changes. Or the check button changes, my bad. Same thing will happen with the checkbox. The checkbox is right here and we can provide the theme, dark theme, and that changes. So let's save this and let's open it up. And to show some contrast, this is the default Godot button. This is the new customized dark theme button. And all these other elements, of course, 
are, you know, with the exception of a line edit, now using the dark theme. So if we had two themes, we could apply one theme to this button, one theme to this button. The most important thing about themes is that it really prevents you from having to do a lot of manual work. So in this case, if we wanted to customize this button to look identical to this button, we'd have to go in here and change the texture up here. Uh, or sorry, not the icon, where is the texture? There is a button in here for texture. But we'd have to change the texture. There's some fields in here where we could do things like change on the hover position or the focus or after you click it when it's active. So you have to change all of those manually on each and every button. And as a result, using themes will save you a lot of time. So my suggestion is because the dot theme files are a little bit complicated, I found it was a lot easier to try to understand how they how they worked by actually downloading some themes and playing around with those themes prior to trying to build my own themes. And that's kind of the overview of Godot themes and how they work. So I hope that you can use themes to your advantage in your own Godot games, and I appreciate you watching this tutorial. If you're not already a subscriber, feel free to subscribe to me if you like this type of content. Otherwise, if you are a subscriber, of course, once again, welcome back, and I hope to see you again soon.